1991 was a solid year for the PBA Senior Tour as it expanded into a dozen events. It was also a very good year for Gene Stuss, who burst onto the scene with a pair of victories and consensus Rookie of the Year honors. But 53-year-old John Handegard stole the senior show by winning three times and collecting over $50,000 and PBA Senior Player of the Year honors. What's in store for 1992? Stay tuned. ESPN and the Professional Bowlers Association present the championship round finals of the $150,000 PBA Showboat Senior Invitational, live from the Showboat Bowling Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. After a brilliant start last season, Gene Stuss survived 56 tough games to nail down tonight's top seed position. Meanwhile, there's a new kid on the block, 50-year-old Nelson Burton Jr., a legend of the sport who in his last appearance in the championship round set the PBA's all-time TV scoring record. Welcome, everyone, to the Showboat Bowling Center, located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hi, everybody. I'm Denny Schreiner, and welcome to a record-setting performance this week in terms of entries on the PBA Senior Tour. 424 players started the week. We are now down to just the final five. Joining me once again, three-time Firestone Tournament of Champions champ, Mike Durbin. And Mike, uh, perhaps the most publicized of the 424 seniors this week, Nelson Burton, Jr., who qualifies in the number five position. Well, Danny, everybody on the golf tour is waiting for Raymond Floyd to turn 50. And on the PBA Bowling Senior Tour, they're waiting for Nelson Burton Jr. to turn 50. And he didn't disappoint us this week. He made the top five after 56 grueling games. But what impressed me the most was I always remember Bo on television when he was bowling with this intense kind of scowl that he had on his face. This week, he was relaxed. He was talking with his opponents, talking with the audience. He seemed very at ease with himself and everyone else. A year ago, you and I and the rest of the people throughout the country had no idea how good a bowler Gene Stuss really was or is at this point in time. He leads this one after 56 games this week. Well, a record field, as you said, of 424 entries, a long format, 56 games, and it took its toll. With three games to go last night, Gene Stuss stuck at the line, hurt his left knee, and barely hung on to lead the tournament. He's wearing a brace today. It's got to affect him, Denny. And it seems each and every year when you and I show up here at the showboat, there are a couple of no-names, unknowns, that end up in the top five. Certainly we have that same scenario this week with Larry Galloway and also Delano Harmon Booth, better known as Hobo Booth. Well, Larry Galloway led our qualifying round, and Hobo Booth got that nickname when he moved to California 32 years ago. His sister called him Ho Boy, B-O-Y, and they asked him out here, do you have a nickname? And he didn't want to say Ho Boy, so he dropped the Y and became Hobo for the last 32 years. And the player that slotted number four, the all-time leading money winner on the PBA Senior Tour, Tita Semez. Well, Tita has the most senior victories with six. He's trying to add to that total, but he's got to win four games tonight to get number seven. And of course, his opening match will be against PBA and ABC Hall of Famer Nelson Burton, Jr. Nelson Burton, Tita Semez doesn't get too much better than that to start things off here this evening, Mike Durbin. Well, Bo, is, uh, this is not one of his favorite pair of lanes, lanes 59 and 60 at the showboat. Uh, they're different. Uh, lane 59 hooks about two or three boards more than 60. But Bo knows him well. He's, he's done a lot of TV shows for other networks here, and so he knows what the pair is like. Starts with a flush strike. Perfect shot, and of course, uh, he bowled on this pair of lanes with Sam Zurich back in the doubles. They finished second, but uh, he has some familiarity with uh, this particular pair of lanes. Well, when he bowled with Sam, he bowled only on lane 59. Yes. Obviously, you like that he struck on the first shot. Right. And, and Sam bowled on 60. The difference is it. 60 hangs, just like that shot with Tita there. The ball does not want to finish hard at the back end. So you, the adjustment for that is you, well, you, you move a little bit right and you try and start it up a little bit and then it will snap through the nose. So, so the really the only way to play the lane is like Tita did then is that kind of fallback shot and you hope that it either gets the scrambler hit or hits dead flush. All right, or you play the percentages. It's much easier to pick up a 10 pin than it is either a washout or a nose hit. That's right. Exactly right, man. As we take a look at our top five and how they position themselves through the six rounds and seven rounds uh, in this particular event. And look at Tita, the moves he made. Five-step player, holds the ball up, 
pushes it out, classic five-step delivery. Now watch the knee bend here. Deep knee bend, good follow-through, perfectly on balance. After right. tonight, becomes the all-time leading money winner on the PDA Senior Tour. And an excellent shot on the left-hand lane, lane 59. I was just noticing how high his backswing is. Seems like it's higher than it used to be. Maybe he's getting more flexible as he gets older. Trying to take the lead here in the second frame. See that little fudge shot up to about 10 or 11 and he got the trip for it. Hard and straight with the frozen rope. And we talked to Bo about this week and the experience. Was it tough or easy to get to the final five? Worried, Mike. Um, the ball doesn't, or the pins don't know my name or anything else. You still have to throw it well. And uh, I had a lot of touring players that stopped off here on the way to the next tournament. And they were chiding me about not being able to compete against these fellows out here. And it was lighthearted. However, I was uh, a little bit worried. And I caught a good break in, I believe, the fourth round of qualifying where I shot a real good score and my confidence built and uh, I barely snuck in the finals. The last two games of qualifying I had uh, pretty good games and qualified I think about 17th or 18th so uh, it wasn't easy. And that's one of the reasons why. Lots of soft 10 pins this week. And again Bo is playing that fallback shot from 10 or 11 like that. Went over the top of that ball a little bit. He's actually I think throwing almost two different hand releases. Turning the ball a little bit more on the lane that hooks 59 and on lane 60 just kind of staying behind the ball and letting the lane hold the ball into the pocket. Said something that completely astounded me as I was chatting with him during the practice period. I said well how many balls did you drill up for the telecast? He looked at me and said I've only drilled up two balls in four years. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's an all-time low for anybody in professional bowling. He said I like the way these two react and I just use one or the other. Hmm. Teed it down by nine, trying to get something started. Rolls up high, and that's the biggest break of the week as Tita takes her back. Wow. Now let's see if we can figure out what pin comes back and knocks out the 3 6 10, right to the heart of the pins. The nine pin, now something, no, that was a pin, came from the left side and got all three of them. That was probably the head pin that came off the sideboard and did that. Instead of down by nine, he leads by one. Could advance to an 11 pin lead if he strikes here on 59. Same hit. He's got the three, six, nine, ten. Otherwise known as the Durbin. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't forgotten. It's been a year yeah. and you were you right know, on there. People all over the country are calling this the Durbin now. Right. You realize that. You started something, huh? Yep. And you even made a couple of them in your career. A couple of them. Well, tell him how you make this one. Well, he's got to hit the three pin on the right, but the ball has a finish enough to get the nine pin. Tough spare. And that's why it didn't finish. Leaves the nine pin. Burton takes the lead sitting on the bench. Players averaged about 223. I'm talking of the top five now on this pair of lanes throughout the week. But as we watched them practice, we figured the scores might be a touch lower than that. I, feel, I look for 2-0 to 210 to win every match. Burton to try and take advantage. Throws the high hard one. Four pin goes down, but the nine pin stands. Bo told me earlier, he says, if you see that ball light, you know I dropped it. <laughs> he also mentioned to me, he said, if I had any area this week, then I slowed it down and tried to circle it just a touch to give myself some room open up the pocket. But he said, if I had trouble, it was nothing but the frozen rope. See, he's tight here all the way. The ball almost right through the heart of the pins. Four nines up there, and the two pin taps out the four pin for an easy spare of the nine. So Bo maintains a 14-pin lead and going to his good lane. And he told me before the match the secret of bowling on a pair like this is to make sure that you hit the one lane. Now his favorite lane is 59, so he wants to be striking on it all the time. And then if you get any help at all, any kind of a carry on 60, a double, and you mentioned a 210-215 game is plenty good enough to win. Should be. Of course, if I predict that, it'll probably be. 30 pins higher or 30 pins lower. Of course, Bo has fond memories of the showboat. He first bowled here back in 1961, and he cashed for $100. There's his favorite lane right there. See that nice stroke he put on there? He forces it on 60 because he just doesn't have the confidence that he can throw the ball in the pocket on that way. Tita Semez after the open, down by 14.
High again. Trips out the four, but leaves the ten. Interesting the way Tita's playing this pair of lanes. He had an A and a B shot. The A shot is what you're seeing now. The B shot was playing outside of five. But uh, every time I watched him throw a ball with a little too much speed outside of five, the ball would hang, and he was looking at 2-8-10. Oh, yeah, the ball just won't finish out there. Cross lane at the 10. No trouble. All right. There is his son, Tommy, who is a terrific bowler in his own right. And a beautiful picture of Marissa, who is six years old today. And that beautiful smile, something that all of us want to see because... At the tender age of six, she's already had three open-heart surgeries, but we're told that she is doing just fine. Just fine. Hmm. Dad trying to get a strike, and he shakes him up on the left-hand lane. So Tita Semez, along with Nelson Burton Jr., kind of searching for the key to the puzzle on lane 60 when we come back to the showboat. McDonald's salutes the fastest man in the world. Harrison Dillard, 1948, 100-meter dash. The most graceful diver. Patty McCormick, 1952 and 56, springboard and platform. The finest gymnast. Peter Vidmar, 1984, team and pommel horse. McDonald's salutes the determination. Al Order, 1956, 60, 64. And 68. Discus. The fierce competitiveness. Nancy Hogshead, Carrie Steinsider, 1984 Freestyle, Tide. The Daring. Bob Richards, 1952 and 56, Pole Vault. McDonald salutes Sheila Young, Pablo Morales, Willie Davenport, and all the men and women who over the years have honored this country in the Olympics and showed us that dreams can come true, just like they did for former Congressman Bob Mathias. 1948 and 52. Decathlon. The championship round finals of the PBA Showboat Senior Invitational are being brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Back to live action in the sixth. Nelson Burton uses a re-rack during the commercial break. This will be the high hard one, I would anticipate. Straight up. Trying for a double and extending the lead. And guess what? Big problems for Bo. Well, unusual. You know, Bo is a great match game player, and he knows that he was in a situation where he could have really put it on Tita with a strike there and then go to his favorite lane. And he just knows that 60 won't come back, so trying to force it into the pocket, fold it aboard. So both players now with an open frame. Things tighten up considerably here in match number one. The difference on that, now he's two pins ahead. If he'd have struck there, he'd have been 25 ahead. And the bad news is Tita's working on a strike in the sixth. But he's got to go to 60. <laughs> but you know what's going to happen before this is all over. Whoever wins this game will end up figuring out 60, and then they'll start missing 59. Perhaps. The thing is that Tita gets to finish on 59. Big advantage. Big advantage. Boy, oh, completely different action on that left-hand lane. Beautiful shot there. But you see his hand go around the oh, ball on sure. that lane, and on the right lane, he's just staying behind the ball, trying to, to fudge it in there. Not working too well. Now watch the hand. It's behind the ball here. It's kind of creep-up style. See the turn here? Nice, soft turn around the ball. See how steady the head is and how on balance he is perfect there at the bottom. Cross lane at the 10, no problem there. But now Bo has to sit down and wait to find out what Tita Semez does. Should Tita throw a double here, he would take the lead by eight pins. like he wanted to give it more room and still cut it off just a touch. The three and the six on lane 60. Boy, everybody is really confused on 60. He thought that he gave that ball enough room, but he was really soft with it. The speed was just soft. It was right at, at 17 miles per hour, a little over 17 miles per hour. 
we see Belly did two boards. You know, it, <laughs> nobody's hooking it too much on that lane. <laughs> I was going to say, it looked like he torqued it up a little bit, but he never got the ball close to far enough right. Trouble is, if you get it three or four boards to the right... Well, the thing is, the move off that, Denny, I mean, assuming that he threw the ball, came off his hand the way he wanted to, would be move a board left, you know. But what he's thinking in his mind is, if I do that, then it's going to be the 2-4-5 or worse. Mm -hmm. Two-pin match. Tita up now in the eighth. Trying to take the four and the nine out. Nine leaves, but the four pin stands. And we're getting down to uh, the tail end of this game. And, you know, both of them in the 190s right now. Somebody that can steal a double here in these last three frames is going to win the match. Tita really has been a superstar on the senior tour. All-time leading money winner. Only player to have six titles. Sticks at the line, but takes out the four pin. It's very hot down there, Dan, and I can imagine perspiration coming off both guys and maybe a drop sticking on the approach somewhere. Shot his highest game of the week on this pair of lanes. Shot 264. You take that right now, mm. uh, anything even close. Better shot. Ooh. Good reaction for Nelson Burton Jr. And we talked to him earlier today. Was he nervous or well prepared for this week's event? Uh, real nervous, Mike. I think that uh, you don't realize sitting in an announce booth as you do or I, or I do that these participants, uh, no matter how much experience you have, are still human beings and you can be nervous. I think uh, the way to combat it for me is just work on my game. Uh, forget my opponent and just do the best I can and I'd be uh, lying to myself or anybody else to not say you're at least be nervous for the first three or four frames. I'll tell you what the heart rate is up right now. A strike here puts him in an excellent position. Well, he can Nope, the four pin. See him come up at the line just a hair. The hand went over the top of the ball which meant probably the ball was a board left of target. And again, Bo is extremely accurate and can throw it in the pocket, you know, almost at any given time that he wants to, but will it carry? Probably wants that one back. No mistakes now. Time to sit down and wait and wonder and watch what Tita Semez will come up with in the ninth and the tenth. Right. If Tita takes it out the sheet, he locks him out. There's more room. Nice shot. I think he moved the board on the left uh, with his feet. That ball skidded through the heads and then finished at the back end exactly what you want. And of course, the key shot of the match and the week right now is coming up for Tito. Down three pins can take the lead with the first one on the 10th. Likes it. Oh, what a nice break. That was a light. <laughs> Four, five, seven was up there for a split second. And they all fell. He made a move on both lanes. About the 11th board. Watch it come in line. Watch the head pin. Now look what's up there. There's the four, five, seven, and they all go. Like a picket fence. This one locks him out. <laughs> Bo yeah. has no chance if he strikes in. Yeah, with the domino effect on that shot. Didn't stay down, and guess what? Baby Split jumps up. Tita upset with himself, and all Nelson Burton can think about is what he needs to win. Ironic. Probably the lane that he would at least like to finish on in the world here. He's got to finish, get two strikes on lane 60 to win his opening match on TV in eight years. Well, a PBA and ABC Hall of Famer will more than likely rise to the occasion. I know one thing. This one will have plenty of velocity. Tita Semez maybe lets one get away, but it's up to Nelson Burton Jr. Right. Well, I don't know whether it'll strike, but I'll bet it hits the 1-3. Oh, right up the track. And 
in the four pin stand. So Nelson Burton Jr. going with the A game, which is a high hard one and can't seem to trip out the four. Last two shots identical. I mean, as far as where the ball hit and the velocity at 19.3 miles per hour each one. And he actually pointed that he that at 10, 15 feet, that was ball at the ninth and a half board and 45 feet was at 11 and a half. I mean, there was no hook at all on that. Well, the good news is a fifth place finish and in his first event gets to the championship round. The bad news is Bo's done for the evening. But uh, more than likely, we'll see him on a number of other ESPN telecasts before it's all over, wouldn't you say? I would say, yes. Uh, with talent like he has, his game very sharp, and he was very serious about coming out here to play. Well, he, he <laughs> acquitted himself tremendously. All right, so Tita Semez wins the opening game over Nelson Burton Jr. When we come back, Mike Durbin's average builder. So you're out of school. You have a job and you need some transportation. Well, something self propelled something you can afford. But you don't want a woofer. You want a Dodge Shadow ES. It looks great. Man, it's got a whole lot of stuff. Yes. And with $1,000 cash back and $500 recent college grad money, this coupe's only $93.78. Dodge Shadow ES, with or without a top. See your nearest Dodge dealer today. You know, they really need those $85 high tops. Then, of course, short hair's back. <laughs> now that haircuts cost 20 bucks. And it's hard to prioritize when they're so good at pleading for everything. Could they possibly understand that the first thing you need to buy is the best health insurance? I mean, you can't ride it. You can't make animal noises with it. But you need it. To make sure you're around to get them the really important things. You know, like Super Mario 3. Average Builders is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut, home of America's favorite pan pizza. For tonight's Average Builder, I like to look at the fundamentals of both the four and five step deliveries. And after I do that, then I'd like to bring on a guest who's going to show us the fundamentals of a six-step approach that's becoming more and more popular in bowling today. Let's look at the four-step delivery first. If I'm a right-handed player, I'm standing with my feet basically together. And at this particular point, remember you left-handers to turn everything around. What I want to be thinking here is for my right hand and my right foot to move together right at the same time. It kind of looks like this. There's the first step. It's the most important step. At this point, I simply let the ball go, and gravity tells me how fast to take the remaining three steps. Let's look at five steps now. I move back on the approach a little bit. And the difference here, my feet again are together. I'm going to start with my left foot first, and I'm going to hold the ball basically one count. Kind of looks like this. Right here, step with the left foot, and from this point on, it's just like a four-step delivery. The right hand and the right foot go together to this point. I let go, and again, gravity tells me how fast to take the remaining three steps. Now for six steps. I'd like to bring in a bowler who's won this tournament three different times. He's a member of both the PBA and ABC Halls of Fame. He's the legendary Dick Weber. Dick, welcome to ESPN, and tell us about your six-step delivery. Well, thank you very much, Mike, and it's a pleasure being with you. And the six-step delivery is really, if you develop this six-step delivery into what you call the four-step delivery. The reason for the six steps is to be relaxed and be comfortable. And many times when you take four or five steps, you're really tight. You're tight in the shoulders. You want to get comfortable. So you back up a little bit more, take the six steps, and go through the procedures. Now, sometimes you'll back up a little bit farther. Sometimes you'll stand in your uh, five-step delivery position. But you'll shorten those steps. But it does relax you. And you get a little more uh, momentum that way. Okay. Now, you threw a shot earlier. Why don't you analyze that shot for us? Will do. As you see, right step, left step, right into the four-step delivery, and just perfect. Isn't that a beautiful picture? It certainly looks <laughs> like a beautiful picture to me. That's the form of the golden arm swing. Remember, whether you take four steps, five steps, or six steps, you pick the one that's best for you, but you got to practice. We'll see you again next week in Lakewood, California, when we'll have another average goal. Semez moves up the ladder with a 200 to 194 victory over Nelson Burton Jr. When we come back, match number two, Tita and the Hobo Boo.
you're into working out, Bud Light invites you to get ready for the ultimate workout. The Bud Light Triathlon Series. Just try it. We filled this tent with 10,000 hungry mosquitoes and biting flies. But they're not biting me. I'm using Deep Woods Off. It repels even the toughest mosquitoes and biting flies. Deep Woods Off works. Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. Ahem. <clears throat> we all scream for ice cream. Yeah. Thank you. Hershey's chocolate syrup. ESPN's cooking up a Tuesday night special of Surf and Turf. A sizzling serving of hot summer nights is a tasty appetizer. Then move on to the main course, a hefty portion of America's favorite pastime. ESPN's Tuesday night special, Surf and Turf. Just make sure you clean your plate. All right, back at the showboats. Tina Chemez, fresh from a 200 to 194 victory over Nelson Burton Jr., starts up in match number two. And Hobo's already made a right decision. He's making T to finish on this right leg. A little more relaxed. Light hit. Ball came off his hand nicely, and Tita starts with a strike here in match number two. And it's our pleasure to uh, invite Nelson Burton Jr. up to the booth. If you promise not to call me Chris, we'll keep you for a whole game. <laughs> well, thanks, Denny. Uh, this pretty exciting match is going to come up. I think Hobo is probably the, the unknown guy out here, and he really bowled well during the tournament. It's amazing. Look at this. As he comes out and opens with a strike, I have to get your impressions of the other players out here on the national tour. And we're not talking about the old-time stars and the legends. Well, these, these fellows out here... Uh, bowled better than I actually thought. There's a lot of guys out here in shape, uh, real good shape. There was 400 and I believe 24 entries, Denny, in the tournament. And I'd say that there are at least 100 guys out here in top shape ready to bowl. They're bowling all 12 tournaments, so they're ready to go. Hobo Booth this time crossing over and uh, presents himself with a problem. Quickly, what about your schedule? Uh, there are 12 PBA events this year in terms of the seniors. How many will you get a chance to bowl? Well, I'm going to bowl in Denver and uh, then the St. Louis tournament, the Touring Pros and uh, the seniors in uh, St. Louis area, O'Fallon, Illinois, I believe, and then uh, in Chictawaga, your national championship, and then maybe a little vacation with y'all down in Florida later on. Ooh, in the fall. That would be nice. Well, it would be great if you win that... Uh, PBA Senior Championship, you know, you bowl in the Firestone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could be the first player of plus 50 to win that tournament. That's a goal. Well, that'd be all right, but they, um, Gene Stuss, uh, he bowled in the Firestone this year, and he, he did real well, and he's your tournament leader here. Um, he's awfully tough. Atita's going to be tremendously tough on this pair. We've done tall casts in this pair, and I know you have too, and it's just a tricky pair of lanes, and Tita's loose, and I think he's got them figured out. Well, let's talk about lane 60 as Tita opens up that lane a little bit and gets the light hit. That was the problem for you, the right-hand lane. When we practiced, Denny, uh, and I knew it historically, uh, I've bowled three or four match games on this pair of lanes in the last decade, and lane 60 just will not swing back unless you're real loose and relaxed. And uh, no matter how long you've sat in the announce booth or been out there, when you bowl one game, you're not loose until that game is over. And... Uh, and right now, Tita, is, as you can see on lane 60, is playing a nice smooth shot. Speed control is the, the, the trick. There's no way you can force it in the pocket like I tried to do. All right, I'm going to follow up with a question. Will it make as it? Tita tries to get the, the strike on the left-hand lane. Mightn't you have tried another ball on lane 60, or are you just a proponent of one ball and change the hand positions? Well, Denny, I don't think I threw a real good ball in the whole match, to answer your question. Uh, I don't think any ball change would have made a big difference unless you could have gotten one that... I could aim at the two pin and have it back into the one three because I pulled every <laughs> shot. <laughs> Tita now trying to get to the left side of the head pin and can't quite get the job done. So an open frame for Tita Semez, Mike, who misses on the left hand lane. Well, he blew an opportunity there, uh, you know, hitting that right lane like he did with the light hit, and then uh, just sent it out a little wide. And <laughs> 50 doesn't want to hook. 59 doesn't want to hook back too much more than 60. Bo, you said something to me that really puzzled me. You said, geez, I thought I was the one that had the two doubles, and I wasn't sure what the score was. Did you bowl that way throughout your career? Did you not look at the score? I, I found um, 
Denny, that uh, I didn't have much success in the early going when I was a rookie on in TV. Uh, I think I finished second the first seven times I attempted in a championship round. And uh, the great uh, Hank Marino, who owned Lodemar Lane's out, in fact, he was voted the bowler of the half century the first 50 years, gave me a tip not to look at the score and just bowl your own game. And I found that I have much more success in a championship round that way, and it keeps you looser and positive. Good shot here on the left-hand lane, and Hobo Booth comes storming back into this match, Michael. He says, what tough pair. <laughs> well, again, now you're looking at a whole different role, though, a little softer speed than, than Nelson or even Tita Semez utilizes. Well, Hobo had a pretty good shot in practice. The only trouble he was running into in practice was he left some pocket 710s, about three or four of them in practice. Tita, this time with a flush hit. That might be the best hit that we've seen on lane 60 thus far. Well, he better take advantage of it right now. Down 16 pins. Utilizing our bowler track system provided by the good folks at Brunswick and Ray Edwards doing the charting here this afternoon. What we see is at 17 miles per hour, he's 15 feet, it's at the ninth board. He bellied at about two boards and at 45 feet. Finished pretty hard from eight and a half all the way to 17. Pretty like shot. That shot and Tita answers with a double of his own. He didn't win six senior titles uh, without uh, answering a few doubles of his own. Nelly, I know that you did a lot of practicing, weightlifting, running. You look like you're in excellent shape. I got ready for the uh, the winter tour, Denny. I hadn't bowled in almost four years, uh, three-some years, as we watch Hobo here try to stay ahead in the match. And I did a lot of work, and it paid off. Crunching strike on lane 60, and all of a sudden, this pair of lanes is looking a lot easier, Mike Durbin. Hobo has such a nice, easy style, four-step delivery. Watch the short backswing, the free arm swing. That's full extension, head steady, accurate as all get out. Let's the ball go on the slide. Must have got at least three or four feet over the line. What, 55 years old, he looks pretty good, I'll tell you what. Been an outstanding bowler in the Southern California, bowl, the Southern California area for years. Eight strikes in ten frames, and then a pocket hit there. So these players are starting to pick up what you're supposed to do on lane 59 and 60. Well, the pair will still strike back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you think? Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're making real good shots right now, but you just can't mis make a mistake I mean, on this pair of lanes right now. Nelson, sorry to have you up here so early. We were hoping to talk to you in the winner's circle, but best of luck uh, the rest of the year, and I know we're going to see you win one of these before too long. See you in Denver, Denny. Good luck. All right. We'll come back with the conclusion of match number two, a 15-pin lead for the newcomer, Hobo Booth from Canoga Park, California. I know. I know I should use a tartar control toothpaste, but mine tasted too strong. Introducing mild tasting tartar control crest smooth mint gel. <laughs> you were right about that crest. My mouth thanks you. It's tough on tartar, soft on you. Okay, on the left. That's it. Smile. They're all related now. I know it's scary. Aren't you glad you used dial? Hold it. No, no, don't go anywhere. Don't you wish everybody did? Take the picture. Here's the real beauty of Rust-Oleum Protective Coatings. A tough barrier against the elements. Rust-Oleum. The name that means protection. He may be a Superman, but after 75 fastballs, even Nolan Ryan's muscles can ache. After the game, it's Advil, and those aches are long gone. Today, it isn't aspirin or Tylenol acetaminophen. It's Advil. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. And while we were away, Tita comes in light and just shreds the rack to cut the lead to five. Back live, he left a four pin and converted that to trail by six pins at this point in the match. Hobo Booth, if he wins, will move on to the semifinal game against a very good friend of his and a player that he's bowled against quite a bit over the last 20 years, Larry Galloway. That's left of target, but it holds pocket, and he's playing the old Roy Buckley fallback shot. Well, he's got a little room on that area, on that lane. Uh, unlike Bo, I mean, he's got just a little bit more turn, a little softer speed. We see his speed is about 17.8 as we look at his wife, Mary, where Bo's speed was about two miles an hour faster. Mm -hmm. Strike here, and it's back to a 16-pin lead. Right. Boy, he's carrying that hit right now, man. He looks great. 
said the light hit for him was by far and away the most effective throughout the entire week. It amazes me, you know, even at 55 years old, he's got to be nervous. This is the first time on national television. He's bowling uh, Tita Simmons, the all-time senior money winner, and <laughs> he's saying, I'm not afraid of you. Bowling his own game and doing a beautiful job of it. Tita down by 16, now in the eighth. Really gave that room. The two and the five, and Tita is, uh, boy, he's got to make this and set himself up for the tenth to have any chance at all. It seemed to you, Mike, that when Tita does make a mistake, it's because he might raise a little bit too soon at the line? He's just not bending his knee quite enough in the fourth step. As we see the light hit, had the bucket up there, it breaks down for the 2-5 and converts it. Tita has always been known throughout his career for having a deep knee bend on the next to last step. He gets that knee almost parallel to the floor in his youth, and that creates a nice, long, smooth slide. But as you get older, sometimes it's not so easy to bend that knee consistently. Still has room for 231. The big question now is, will it be enough? Watch the knee bend. Tried to trip out the two, got a nuzzle, but the two pin stands. And he's in serious trouble. He has, he's in the position now of hoping that Hobo will open and he can strike out. And what's so amazing is two ABC Hall of Famers may be eliminated in this one, and three players who have just started their careers will be vying for this championship. Isn't that ironic, Dan? I mean, you got uh, two guys that haven't won at all, and Gene Stuss, who's only in his second year as a PBA member, will be the ones left if Hobo can put this match away. But it shows you that there is an opportunity to come out here after the age of 50 and enjoy some success. And a lot of guys are doing that. It's the fastest... It's the fastest growing part of the PBA. That one was right and sailing, and guess what? Tita quickly gets up, changes chairs, and starts to take a look at the electronic scoreboard. One, two, four, ten, wash out, and he got that into the oil, and it just skidded right. He just aimed that shot, Then he, he been so loose and free, he's got to get the ball to the left of the head pin and drive the head pin into the ten. In this lane condition right now, not an easy shot at all. Lots of speed and turn, but oh, almost came up with the break of the week, giving it the back door shot, and even Hobo has to laugh to himself on that one. Watch the head bin. Flips the two, goes to the sideboard, comes back and hits the four, and the four almost gets the ten, and now it's only a three-pin match. He did not mean to do it that way. He was trying to get the ball left to the head pin. Then he comes back with a picture-perfect stretch. Well, he's already done the worst he can do. Six in an open. I mean, he didn't, you know, he had the match locked up. Now he's got to earn it back again. If he doubles, you know, another strike, an eight, and he's got to win. Larry Galloway off in the distance practicing. Gene Stust, our tournament leader after 56 games this week. Light. Looked like he held on to that one a little too long in trying to steer it into the pocket. Yep. The first one was free and the fingers whacked it. That one, the span got about a half inch shorter. And as he has done throughout his illustrious career, Tita Semez knows that he must come up with something. Dig deep down inside in the 10th frame if he is to advance here in this championship. He's done it more times than not. Nice game, though, by Hobo Booth. Nice game. And we said at the beginning, you know, that we thought 200 to 2 team would win the matches. You know. If he didn't get three strikes for 220, that'll be a definite winner. Got a strike on this ball, or he's a loser. It went right. And a bad break for Tita Semez, who uncorked a beautiful shot on lane 60. Hobo Booth suddenly realizes he's in the next match. Anyway. <laughs> well, it's a battle of old buddies. Galloway and Booth, they've been knocking at each other's door for a long time out there in Southern California. Tita Semez with a solid performance, but it's that man who will advance into the semi-final game when we return to the showboat.
We filled this tent with 10,000 hungry mosquitoes and biting flies. But they're not biting me. I'm using Deep Woods Off. It repels even the toughest mosquitoes and biting flies. Deep Woods Off works. Think about who you'll be driving around over the next, say, seven days. That's how long your dealer said it would take before he could fix your brakes. At Midas, we think that's exactly seven days too long. Because our experts can fix them right the very same day you bring in your car. And that's something to think about today. Midas, because your brakes can't wait. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. In places you can feel it, you know you got it right. Everything else is just a lie. Everything else is too right. Keep your butt light shining. I don't need some fancy cologne to tell me I'm a man. I use Skin Bracer, it smells great. But it also cools and tones my skin. Confidence is very sexy, don't you think? Skin Bracer Aftershave by Menon. Get ready for some senior sizzle. It'll take some great moves to win the Southwestern Bell Classic. Complete live coverage begins Friday afternoon on ESPN. Another close confrontation. Hobo Booth, the winner by four pins over Tita Semez, 2.13 to 2.09. But uh, yesterday, Tita had an opportunity to pick up some extra cash here at the Showboat Bowling Center. Last night, four legends of bowling competed in a version of the Skins game worth $15,000. All-time great Dick Weber was on hand. And so was PBA Hall of Famer Dave Sutar of Kansas City. Tita Semez, the PBA Senior Tour's all-time leading money was there. And so, of course, was the irrepressible Carmen Salvino. And this was Weber in the fifth, a key shot worth 2,000. Without the per diem. Oh, he dropped it at the line. Boy, no, that wasn't a foul line adjustment, was it? Was that one of those famous Weber foul line adjustments? And now Tita Smith looking for his first skin at $2,500. Oh. Then it was Mr. Salvino who already had 1,500 but looking for 9,000 more. Carmen wants to be the first in. Oh, and he is! <laughs> and then Semez with Sutar and Weber rooting him on was trying to strike to keep it alive. You know it like that, what difference does it make? a crowd better than a Broadway star collected the big cash last night and there were some other players that came up big as well this week. been battling for more than two decades but now they're on national television a bucket brigade just didn't stand a chance the people of donegal township depended on each other to rebuild so a group of donegal farmers got together to form a mutual insurance company now they'd always be able to help harry zeppler took the first policy for his house and barn annual premium three dollars and ninety cents you could always count on the good people of Donegal. dear wendy i'm really enjoying my summer vacation yesterday i did some fishing 
and then cook dinner over a campfire. But luckily, there was a Wendy's nearby, where I was able to get a junior bacon cheeseburger, baked potato, salad, and biggie drink, and it didn't cost much, because everything on the super value menu is just 99 cents each. Tomorrow, I'm going to try windsurfing. Love, Dad. Maybe not. Wendy's super value menu, the best place to spend your summer. Sunday night, Chicago's South Side slugger Frank Thomas leads the White Sox against Roberto Kelly and the Yankees. Live at 8 Eastern on America's Game of the Week, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. All right, Larry Galloway finishing up his practice shots, but don't forget, coming up, Major League Baseball Friday as the Brewers and the Red Sox will go at it. I think that's at Fenway. And, of course, uh, the Twins led by Kirby Puckett and Red Hot McGuire. My goodness, Mark McGuire with, what, 23 homers right now, Michael? I was going to ask you. I know it's in the 20s. Yeah, so. I think Rob Deere is right behind it, but I think he's at 23 and holding right now. It's been a week, I think, since he's hit a homer. Right now, Larry Galloway trying to homer on the very first time on national television. He'd like to see a grand slam. And he looks a little pale right there. He looks definitely very nervous. Opens up, tugs the shot, goes Brooklyn, and what better way to start your career on national television than with that Durban Tug City <laughs> shot. <laughs> you know, I was thinking that Larry is getting a break in bowling Hobo. It's got to make him relax a little bit more than if he were bowling Burton or Simmons, and he'd be really uptight then. These guys are probably bowling for the cash and a light beer as many times as they've gone after each other. Hobo starts with a strike of his own. And they'll cheer each other on as Larry Galloway is talking to Hobo right now. Isn't that funny? With a smile on his face. Well, this is not only for the Showboat Senior Invitational. It's also for bragging rights in Southern California. In Southern California, right, for the next 10 years, That's probably. <laughs> or until they meet again. Boy, really turned to that shot. The ball skidded a little bit on him, and a nine cap. Picked up the speed a little bit, and it just skidded and never made the turn. Probably got a board right. See it about uh, the 11th board, just spinning there. It never really goes into a roll. See, it tries to make the turn left, but the ball never really got into a roll. Like that one. That one got into a roll right at the back end. We see 17.4 miles per hour. He bellied at three boards, but it was on the ninth board at 45 feet and just never got back to board 17. Larry Galloway on a strike could take the lead here if he X's on lane 60. Much softer speed here. And with the soft speed, he picks the finish on lane 60. Kind of just floats up there. Five steps, very broad shoulder. And it has what we kind of call a swing out. As that swing is coming back, it bounces out away from his body a little bit, but it's short. And actually, he just tried to get that off his hand as smooth as he can, as he could. Finishes up about a foot from the foul line. A carpenter by trade. Larry said, it's a lot tougher to get to the finals here than it is to build a house. Had two good breaks on lane 59 of Brooklyn and trip four and takes a quick 20-pin lead over his good friend. Galloway opens with the first three. Meanwhile, Hobo Booth is just trying to catch up. High in the pocket, takes out the four, but leaves the nine. Good shot. You know, just broke a little bit early. Again, speed is so critical here. You, if you vary that speed a half a mile per hour, the ball might break six inches sooner than it did if you throw a little harder and... 17.7 right there. We see that he's only bellying at a board and a half. Spare up for Hobo. And, of course, you can watch extended coverage of the PBA Senior Tour on ESPN coming up next Thursday night, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.30. For you folks out on the West Coast, the Pacific Cowboy PBA Senior Open, our top seed this week is the defending champion in that event, Gene Stuss where he won his first senior title. Nice, even speed there. I would guess that's about 17 and a half miles per hour right there for him. Now Larry Galloway will try and continue the string. He's got the first three. 
Actually, that shot was 17 miles per hour, so it was off a half a mile. Hailing from Lakewood, California, Larry's in his own hometown next week. Like to go back the hero. Good shot there as the four pin stands tall. Keeps it in the one three. And keeps his 20 pin lead if he can make the spare. He missed a few spares this week, especially 10 pins. In the final game, he had a chance to catch Gene Stuss and missed two 10 pins in the eighth and 10th frames. Bold with one ball throughout most of qualifying and in match play and went to stick his hand in it prior to the telecast tonight and his hand is swollen up so much this week that he couldn't even use the ball, the favorite ball that he had all week long. He said, I didn't want to open up the fingers and the thumb because I may never get the same feel out of it. 56 games, it does things. Hot weather, it's hot today. I can understand. <laughs> it's also <laughs> warm out in our truck, I'm told. The air conditioner has been on and off, so George Smith and Ken Samuel are going to lose a couple of extra pounds this week. Keep the fluids running, boys. And there was the nemesis for most of the players this week, Mike, that didn't get to the telecast. When you threw it in the pocket, the 10 pin was hard to knock down. Okay, Larry just uh, right now trying to keep the ball in the pocket. It looks like he's loosened up and is a little more relaxed right now and making better shots. <laughs> not getting the breaks he did the first and third frame. Now, he did have trouble with his spare during the week. We talked about the fact that it's warm out in our ESPN production truck. It's also extremely warm on the television pair. Nelson Burton Jr. was sweating bullets by the time he got up here. Hobo wants to get a double here to cut into that 19-pin lead. Light hit carries in the fifth, and that was the hit that he used throughout most of the week. Most of the week. He loved it. He loved that light hit all week long. Now he can take the lead if he can strike one more time on lane 59. And the key seems to be for him to maintain that even speed somewhere between 17 and 17 and a half miles per hour. Trying to regain the lead if he strikes on lane 59. See the good speed? Boy, you could just see it as it arcs to the pocket. Beautiful shot for Mr. Booth. And when we come back, the conclusion of the semifinal game, who will take on Gene Stuss for the showbo title? Red Devil Enamel. You can always count on its durable finish. Harder than ordinary paints, its beauty lasts and lasts. Red Devil Enamel for the finish of a lifetime. Okay, on the left, that's it, smile, they're all related now, I know it's scary. Aren't you glad you used dial? Hold it. No, no, don't go anywhere. Don't you wish everybody did? Take the picture. Brought just the essentials, huh? What? I, I think they'll have shampoo there. But I have head and shoulders. We're just gonna be gone a week. Right, a week. Let's say it's the end of the week. We're rested, a little sunburned, and this stunning brunette sits down beside us. And that's the day your flakes decide to show up. Well, how do you know when they'll show up? Doesn't matter. Head and shoulders helps take care of the condition that causes flakes. Because you never know. You know? Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And don't forget, later on on Sports Center, an update on Patrick Ewing, who apparently has hurt uh, the thumb on his shooting hand, Wimbledon action, and of course, the American League West War on Sports Center. Larry Galloway with a strike in the sixth. And uh, a very good friend of bowling, a lady that lives here in Las Vegas, Joyce Deitch, the president of the United States 10-Pin Bowling Federation. These two guys have probably bowled for beers for years. They've mm. got a great match going here. They got one brewing, you could say. <laughs> yeah. Not a good shot there. No, he... 59 is his nemesis because the ball hooks earlier on that lane and he has to try and force it into the pocket. As soon as he has to force anything, Larry's game will fall apart. Or not fall apart, but just not be as, as effective. Mm -hmm. And our good friend Mike Connor, the commissioner of the PBA, who 
is building up the frequent flyer miles since January 1st. He's been out at virtually every stop on the PBA Tour. He's been out on a lot of them, I know that. And, uh, Larry Galloway's breathing a sigh of relief as he really missed that spare. I don't know how he made it, just clipped it going by. All right, Galloway gets all the breaks early, has the momentum. This one has flipped around, though. If Hobo strikes here, he's well on his way to the title match. Did you see that? The feet got a little quick, the speed got fast there be interesting that, that ball speed is probably up right close to 18 miles per hour 18.1 right there the difference is it, just that half a mile from 17 and a half as we see fred boach fred Borden, <laughs> <laughs> coach of team usa and a lot of pro bowlers you're probably wondering why all these dignitaries here at the showboat this week as the two and the four get taken right off the five the bowling proprietors association of america annual convention is here in Las Vegas this week so a number of the notables in town and a an unforced error I guess you would call it in tennis but uh, out of nowhere Booth opens in the seventh absolutely the difference between the senior pro and the, and the touring players he threw a, a normal sh conventional shot where the touring players would have thrown something hard and straight at that 2-4-5 tries to come back and make amends on lane 59 but the question is has he given too much away to Larry Galloway who leads by 14 heading into the eighth well, he's certainly given a bunch away, but it's not too late yet. Hobo can still come back and win this match. Good speed on that shot, and his wife looks on and appreciative of the light hit on lane 60. And probably the most important shot of the week coming up for Larry Galloway right now. On his difficult lane, that ball kind of hung on his thumb a little bit and didn't make the turn, but he gets the light scrambler hit. Wasn't a real strong shot. Thank you, he says. Well, there were a handful of them up there for a moment. A little more room. This one does not get back in time. But he's got a relatively easy spare in the middle of the lane that won't put any pressure on him to make. Still a possible 228 for Galloway. But that might not be enough. If Hobo takes it off the sheet, he could shoot 234. I really don't look for either one of them to take it off the sheet then right now. This is they haven't been under this kind of heat before. I mean, this is a national tournament. This is a big field. It's television audience one. Hobo just wants to get a double here to get himself set up for the 10th frame and cut into that 14 pin lead. Again, the feet were a little quick and the speed was just too much. It had to be close to 18 miles per hour again, I would think. 17.9 right there. But he probably doesn't feel like he's throwing the ball that hard. No, the adrenaline is up. I mean, you know, he kept the ball relatively on line. We can see he hit the 10th board. He bellied the two boards. You know, he didn't make a big mistake, a half a, a half a mile per hour in the ball speed, but that makes the difference on lane 60. It won't make it back, as Bo told us earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bo said it was critical. You had to be within about a half mile an hour on each shot on the right-hand lane to get the same reaction. He's got to get himself two strikes in the 10th here, frame here to give himself any chance to win this match. Not his fault. Good shot. As Mary looks on and just holds her head down. He's not out of the match yet. He makes the spare and strikes. He shoots 203 and forces Galloway to get some kind of mark. Quality shot there when he had to have it. Now, no mistakes. Have to be impressed with the way that Hobo Booth has performed in his first appearance in the championship round. If he strikes here, he finishes with 203. Forces Galloway to get at least eight. A little more direct. Relaxed. Now it's up to Larry Galloway. A carpenter by trade who was laid off in January. And wouldn't this be the nice foundation for his senior tour career of victory here in Las Vegas. He used the money to pay some bills at home. Very little time. 
a very good shot. Excellent shot for Galloway, who wraps up the semifinal match over his good friend. And now he can breathe a sigh of relief, but it's not going to get any easier as Gene Stuss is next in line. I talked to Gene earlier about his sore knee. He says it's not bothering him, but I don't think he's telling the truth. I think it is bothering him. Well, he's got the liniment on, the brace, the bandage. Told me it was a little tender, but he said, I think I can gut it out for one game. Watching him in practice, I think Gene will choose to finish on the left lane, which will mean that Galloway will get to finish on his favorite lane. He has got lane 60 figured out. 59 is a tough lane for Galloway. I remember back when I told you that somebody would figure out the right-hand lane? Are you ever wrong? Well, <laughs> five, six, seven times a week, but hey, this time I was right. Definitely were right. That soft speed that he's using here. Less than 17 miles per hour. The only one on the telecast going at that slow. Hobo Booth finishes third, collects a $5,000 check. Galloway relaxes, but he won't be like that for long because Gene Stuss is next in line. On your mark, set. The Bud Summer Games. It could be the experience of a lifetime. Every second of an asthma attack can feel like an eternity. That's why there's Primatine Mist. Primatine opens clogged breathing tubes fast. When speed counts, Primatine Mist. Fastest type asthma relief without a prescription. Superstar rivals join the nation's best to realize their ultimate dream. Now, Sports Illustrated captures all their explosive power on the video NBA Dream Team produced by the NBA. It's free with your paid subscription. Over Robinson, Barkley, Magic, Bird, Malone, Ewing, and Jordan. Now shooting for a common goal. Mullen, and nobody takes you inside like Sports Illustrated. Call to order or renew for this incredible free video. Along with 30 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the college and pro football previews, for only $1.39 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Meet the men who will wake up the world when the dream team becomes a reality on this free video. And enjoy every great moment to come in Sports Illustrated. Call now. Championship frame is brought to you by Midas. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. All right, let's pick up the action. Tenth frame, game number one, Matita Simez. Trailing at this point in the match, needed the first strike in the tenth to take the lead over Nelson Burton, Jr. Clutch player throughout his entire career. And they say when you need one, throw it a little wider. That's what he did. Comes in light, trusts it, and the pins do the work. There's his reaction. There is the score, 200 to 194. Tita moved on. And then it was game number two. Hobo Booth was the one that needed the strike in the 10. And he doesn't have the experience. But, same lane. Right over the second arrow. Sure looks like he's getting experience in a hurry. Flushed in the 1-3. That's what you call on-the-job experience for... Hobo Booth, who defeated Tita Semez 213 to 209, which brought us to the semi-final game. A couple of old friends bowling, and it was Larry Galloway's clutch shot in the tenth that was the difference. And he only needed eight, but sometimes that can be difficult. Put negative thoughts in your mind right over about the ninth or eighth board. Trussick comes in light and shreds the rack. And that was enough for a 227 to 203 victory as Larry backed up and realized, hey, I'm in the title match. Last year, Gene Stuss was the Rookie of the Year. If Larry Galloway wins tonight, he might be the Rookie of the Year in 92. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If she had a fever, you wouldn't wait a week to see the doctor. If she were hungry, 
you wouldn't wait a few days to feed her. So why wait even a day to fix the brakes on a car you drive her around in? At Midas, we don't just fix your brakes right. We can fix them right the very same day you bring in your car. Think about it. Midas, because your brakes can't wait. Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. Ahem. <clears throat> we all scream for ice cream. Yeah. Thank you. Hershey's chocolate syrup. I think they'll have shampoo there. We might not have head and shoulders. We're only going to be gone a week. Right, a week. Head and shoulders helps take care of the condition that causes flakes every day. Because you never know. You know? Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. They've been waiting all week for this moment. The final two to buy for the Shobo Senior Invitational Championship. Our top seed Gene Stuss stands in after averaging almost 220 this week. And Gene has chosen to start on 59, which means that Galloway's got to finish on his tougher of the two lanes. Obviously, Stuss has been watching ESPN. Gene comes out firing, and now he's going to fall back with a grimace on his face. And he just, his last practice ball, just drilled a strike on that lane and said, I want to start here. <laughs> and zap, they turn the lights on, and somehow it's a little different. Arm swings have been known to tighten up. And that one certainly did. All right, an open frame. He must forget about that and realize there are nine more to come. Parity, by and large, for Larry Galloway in terms of the marks, but uh, he did like lane 60. Oh, he likes it. He likes the reaction on this lane much better. Comes he gets back, a good break. Trips the four right off the bat. The key for him is going to be what he does on 59. I mean, he just doesn't, in his mind, he's thinking, as we see, he's down to 16.7 miles per hour with really only a one-board head belt. Look at that, 9 to 8. It's like slow motion. <laughs> Without slow-mo. But in his mind, he's got the feeling that if he throws it wide here, it won't make it back, but he knows if he starts it up, it's going to do exactly that, right through the heart of the pins. Now, this is what kills you about the sport of bowling. He hits the nose and ends up with a six-pin. Gene Stuss hits the nose, and he's got a split. And, of course, when you're in that situation, you're thinking that you're the one that always gets the split when you hit the nose, and the other guy never does. That's right. Always gets the break. And, of course, I think the feeling on both tours, the national tour and the senior tour, is that the better player always gets the worst breaks. Is it? That's what they think. Now, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but that's what they think. What did you used to think? That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> somehow I knew. Somehow I just knew. Well, Gene Stuss must get back to task here after opening in frame number one. See how he plays this right-hand lane. Boy, he tried to rip it. That one ends up with a problem, too. So Stuss off to a very slow start. And, again, his problem when he has it is coming up at that foul line. And when he comes up, he doesn't get the lift with the fingers. We see the difference in the speed and the head belly. He bellied that board three boards. It got out to five at 45 feet. It's never going to come back from five. Going to try and slide the two right into the ten. Almost got a break off the pit. Boy, if anything was going to get Larry Galloway's arm swing loose, it would be that. Five-step player at the back of the approach. Watch him step. Now he moves the ball. Watch the knee bend here. Coming up, see how fast he came up. Straight at the line at that point. He's got to stay down longer than that, so he, the fingers will stay in the ball then. You have to wonder if that knee is bothering him just that much more. 
Got more of a handful on this shot. Up high again, and he averts the split, but still hasn't hit the pocket in three shots. And that's exactly what happened to him throughout the entire practice session. High on the left lane, couldn't get it up on the right lane. And why he chose to finish on 60, I really don't know. I mean, if he had any success in practice, it was on 59. Unless he's going with the defense and saying that Galloway can't strike on 59. Mm -hmm. Spare up for Stuss in the third. And now let's see what Larry Galloway comes up with. A double here would go a long way. Well, he's got to get the first one first. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, Bo said the secret on a pair like this is, is your favorite lane not missing it. Keeping striking on your favorite lane. Because <laughs> that one fell back. That one, I bet you, got in about 11 or 12 and fell back as his wife, Ethelin, just <laughs> enjoys that. Now that, now how can she laugh at a shot? She's supposed to be supporting him. Well, you know what my dad used to say when something like that happened. You say, anybody get wet? <laughs> of course, no one in the history of bowling, other than Chuck Pisano, has ever missed a five pin. And he missed it against Carmen Salvino. Still, no one other than Pisano has ever missed the five pin in a clutch situation. Don't forget, coming up immediately following our tournament here in Las Vegas, top-ranked boxing from the Blue Horizon in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So don't go away. Larry Galloway, see what he does in this left lane. He moves in. A little bit tighter, held the line, and a little bit better ball speed there. So a strike in the fourth for Galloway. He leads by 21. No time like the present to get something started if you're thinking Gene Stuss. Right now, he's just trying to get the ball to 1-3. He hasn't done that yet. Mm. Worry about the carry later. Just hit the pocket one time. he keeps sending the ball right on that lane and as Bo told us earlier the ball will not make it back on lane 60 unless you got fingers of steel and Gene hooks the ball a decent amount on the senior tour for senior players but he can't get it back all right so what does he do he's got to tighten the line up I mean actually it's a uh, it's a similar shot to what either slow the speed down as we look at his wife Sally or move the feet a board to the right and the target almost a board to the left and throw the frozen rope, which Bo did. Yeah. Been high both times on lane 59. First time really paid the price with a 4.67 to open the match. See, here's where he's going to get the feet a hair left and he can give it the room on 59. And let the lane bring it back. More swing on that shot. And crosses Brooklyn. Stuss throws his hands up in the air and says, I knew it all the time. I made that two and one left, and look what I got. He's totally lost. I mean, he doesn't even have one close to the one three and five frames. Triple A couldn't get him to the pocket. <laughs> huh? Right now, no. He's got to do something different. Or the double. And that speed almost too soft, didn't it appear? Almost. Yeah, I like to see the ball speed on that one. And Stuss's speed is about close to 18 miles per hour. 16.4. He had it up about, you know, close to 17. 16.8, mm -hmm. 16.7. Great to have that Brunswick bowler track, isn't it? We can chart the position of the ball and the speed with every shot. Uh-oh, unforced error for Larry Galloway. And now Gene Stuss has to be thinking. What a major league break that was. Well, you remember at the PBA Senior Championship where he was totally lost there and hopelessly out of it. And Handyguard made a mistake similar to this along the line. Only I think John got a split, and he wound up getting seven or eight, four or five strikes at the end of the match to win the match. So yeah, it's well, not over. Still leading by ten, but that was a major break through the nose. And all of a sudden, for the title, Larry Galloway throwing a whole different game. Well, the pair, again, is not easy, and he did get some very good breaks in the You're match right. against Hobo. Good point. And suddenly, you know, a tough pair under pressure situations gets tougher. Right now, he's looking at just filling frames and getting through, and he's, you know, Stuss has not hit the 1-3 yet. 
course, one of my good friends, Fran Wolf, who for many years was the national tournament director on the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour, now working for the Showboat Bowling Center. And she's, of course, back home in Las Vegas. Nice to see her. Biggest shot of the week for Stuss. Gives it some room. Does it come back? Oh, my. Nearly had the sour <laughs> apple. Ends up with a pocket 7-10. What else can go wrong? First time he hits the pocket, he says, that's not such a good idea. Wow. Over about the ninth board. Comes in light. Watch the five pins standing like a rock. The four is up there for a minute, too. The four and the five go out, and the seven and the ten don't. <laughs> Tried to bounce it out of there. Nothing happened. And uh, this is going to be one of those, could be 170 to 160 wins. Mm -hmm. Gene trying to keep his sense of humor. But when you have three opens and six frames and you're down by 22, it's tough to laugh it off. Especially when you bowl 56 games and bowl so well all week long. More speed. And got the 10 out. Still alive. Not dead yet. Yeah, double here is like hitting the jackpot. Right now, it definitely would be. He'd like rolling seven in the seventh frame. Nice roll-up shot, and a solid seven pin. Ethelin can't believe that break. Of course, it was a bad one. You know, this is like uh, two marathon runners trying to get to the finish, and they it's like they're crawling the last 10 feet, both of them here. It's uphill. <laughs> yes, definitely it's uphill. With the wind in their face. Now, he missed the 4-7. Will he make the seven pin? No problem. No problem. Another frame filled. 21 pins ahead with three frames to go. Gene Stuss, when he gets up on lane 60 now, after almost leaving the sour apple, has got to be scared. <laughs> He's already afraid of that lane. It's got to really be bad. Well, I know one thing. If it's me, I'm five boards to the right with my feet, and I'm throwing the same shot I did the last trip. Maybe you, you can't try get for Brooklyn. it to go Brooklyn. You can't get it to go Brooklyn on the right-hand lane. Boy, hit the heart of the pins three times on that lane. Six pins, six pins, six ten. Down to a 20 pin lead. And he's just looking to fill the frames. He almost missed the three six the last time he had to shoot cross lane on this lane. Let's see what happens here. Because the thought in his mind is, I don't want to chop it, but don't throw it too far right. I mean, all these negative things going through the mind. 12 years has just $3,000 in earnings. If he would win, it would be $14,000 more. But he looks back, and you can't blame the lanes for missed spares, Mike. I know. See, it, all the wrong things are going through Larry's mind right now. He's not aggressive. He's just trying to fill frames. He's just trying to get the game over. And Stuss has got another chance. Down by eight could take the lead if. He performs a miracle on lane 60, which means a strike. Boy, he strapped this ball, runs it out six right around the 10. No double there. But it still isn't over. Eight pins, he picks it up, strikes in the ninth. Watch the six as he runs this one out. Boy, it looked great. Six pin with a B line around the 10. Hard and straight, right at the 10-pin. Classy shot there, Mike Durbin. I think he's forgotten about the knee now. He's into the match. It says, you know, the worst in the world that can happen has happened, and I'm still alive. I mean, the fact that, I mean, I hate to say this, but it's not a given that Larry Galloway is going to mark the last two frames. Not after what we've seen. And Larry knows that, too. He's just trying to gut it out at this stage. Stuss with a handful, kept the speed up, and a smashing strike on lane 59. So he's done what he had to do in the ninth frame. Larry Galloway gets up, you know, can strike out from 193, and the title would be his. But I don't look for that to happen. A lot of murmuring going on in the background. They're wondering. Oh, that's real slow and low. Through the nose again. You wonder how sore that hand has to be, how swollen it is. The ball just not coming off his hand at all. Well, 
I don't think it's the sore hand. It's the pressure of the moment, Dan. It's the situation. It's just everything right now. I mean, there's a certain amount of embarrassment going on here, too. I want to be a respond in this pressure situation. It's just so hard to do. He just missed his spare. And makes it this time to maintain his eight pin lead. What that means, though, now is he cannot shut out Gene Stuss. I mean, no one has had a double in this match. There's been two strikes by both players. It's a matter of if, who can stay clean. Stuss with three splits and Galloway with two blows. Not very good bowling, but somebody's going to win. Well, it ain't pretty, but somebody's going to come away with the title. 183 if he strikes out. Better shot. Again, the soft, soft speed down to about 16 and a half miles per hour, and the ball crept up there for that four pin. Important thing now is to make sure you make the four. Right. 16.3, that speed was. When Stuss gets up, it'll probably be about 19. It'll be a rocket to the pocket. Rocket to the pocket. Most important, important spare of his career. Stays with it nicely, and so Galloway has done what he had to do. Now he needs some count, but he forces Gene Stuss to throw a strike in the 10. If he strikes, he forces him to get a strike and eight pins and a spare. So anything can happen. We could have a tie. I mean, definitely I'll guarantee this, under 200 is going to win. <laughs> yes. Well, we've seen some pretty good scores, though. Last game was 227 game for Larry Galloway. Heads to the other side this trip, and he's done. You can see the relief <laughs> on Larry Galloway's face. He said, you know, I just went 10 rounds with Evander Holyfield and came up with 170, but I may be the champion. Well, one strike to win. Has to hurry. And Larry Galloway is the champion with a 170 game. Gene Stuss is going to finish in the 150s. Galloway looking to the heavens and Gene Stuss just as disappointed as a player can be. After 56 games, the leader of this tournament, and now he has to settle for second place at the showboat in Las Vegas. A dream comes true for Larry Galloway as he wins 14,000 and his first PBA senior title. Everybody did. Take the picture. The Bud Games. It could be the experience of a lifetime. John, how you doing? You know, AutoZone customers are pretty special. I mean, they take great pains in doing a job just right. So they know exactly what they want. That's why we carry so many parts. And also why we price them so low every day of the week. Because you've got to admire a guy who'll tackle a job like putting in a starter, a water pump, a rack and pinion. And you've got to give a guy like that exactly what he wants. The right parts and the right price. The 
the championship round finals of the PBA Showboat Senior Invitational are being brought to you by Super 8 Motels. Beautiful mornings at 8. And by Deep Woods Off. Repels extra tough mosquitoes and biting flies. They're still cheering for Larry Galloway, who wins his first PBA Seniors Championship. A game of 170, but it was more than enough to win. Well, I tell you what, my knee says it. Hey, anything. <laughs> I couldn't believe I finished. <laughs> Jack Cook, the general manager here at the Showboat Bowling Center, has a check, and he's already given you the trophy. Larry, nice bowling. I, I know we'll make this fast because I know your knees are shaking, but congratulations. Here's a check for $14,000. <laughs> he's new at this mike <laughs> we almost got rid of you <laughs> well it's been a tough year for you but right now uh you have to be riding high i tell you what you can't believe how high <laughs> <laughs> i won't have to drive home i'll just float <laughs> <laughs> well compose yourself when we come back i want to chat about that title game we'll be right back here to the showboat in las vegas in just one moment Attention all golfers. Now, after 50 years, a teaching concept is here that you can grasp. The split second you start your downswing is crucial to striking the ball correctly. This is what golf is all about. John Armstrong's golf video lesson titled A Golfer's Dream will show you and tell you the techniques of simplified know-how. With simplified know-how, you'll strike the ball correctly. Your right arm will be in the correct position. You will gain distance. It's exciting. Best of all, you'll retain the use of this know-how as long as you play. Order John Armstrong's golf video today and receive this bonus, a putting technique to save four to six strokes off your putting game. This has never been taught before. John Armstrong will show you how. A 60-day money-back satisfaction guarantee. Call 1-800-942-1400 to order your golfer's dream video lesson or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3.95 shipping and handling to P.O. Box 3066. Palm Beach, Florida, 33480. That's 1-800-942-1400 for your golfer's dream. One swing. Win in the Subway Grand Slam Challenge. Each home run on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball means a fan who names the hitter wins cash. A Grand Slam wins 50000 Call 1-900-737-ESPN. 95 cents a call, under 18 needs parent permission. Every home run wins. Grab the favorite meal of ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, a sack of subs from Subway. The White Sox meet the Yankees Sunday night on ESPN. All right, Mike Durbin, do you have a question for our newest senior champion? Larry, the struggle the last game on that pair, what was the problem on that pair? What made it so tough? Shaking knees. <laughs> I was real nervous. Uh, there was a fairly good shot. If I could relax a hand, it would hold the line and would go solid in the pocket. But the hand wouldn't relax. It kept wanting to do things all by itself. <laughs> that span kept getting shorter, is that oh, what? Oh, definitely. That span, I mean, it's got to be at least two inches by now. You're a carpenter by trade. Are you ready to give that up in the senior tour full time? It's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk that over with Mama. To get to the title match, you had to knock off one of your real good friends, Hobo Booth. That was a terrific game in the semifinal. Well, you know, we talked about it when we were over there practicing. You know, I was sitting there and I said, Hobo, I said, I only want one thing. I said, the two of us will bowl a match and one of us gets a shot at the title. Fortunately, it was me. And now you've got the bragging rights to Southern California as well as a tournament victory here in Las Vegas.